There's a special case in kinematics uh, known as constant acceleration, and obviously that's when the velocity uh, um, changes uh, at a uniform rate. Uh, the most common um, example of this would be gravity, uh, where the uh, acceleration remains constant during uh, you know, free fall. So um, a few ways we can look at it. We can look at velocity uh, as a function of time. Okay, So if you think about... Um, my acceleration being constant, again, it's just dv dt, as we talked about previously. Rearranging that uh, and doing some integration, so bringing dt to this side, uh, you get this integral, a dt, and you get dv over here. Now, of course, if acceleration is constant, it can come outside uh, the integral, and you're just left with um, the acceleration times time equals the change in velocity, Rearranging that, you get the falling equation. Again, this is a constant acceleration equation that relates velocity and time. We can do the same thing with position and time, again, starting with uh, the velocity equaling um, ds dt, and then taking what I know about velocity for constant acceleration that I just found, plugging that in up here. Now doing a little re rearranging here, bringing dt over to this side integrating both sides, so I have the integral of ds and then the integral of v dt, okay, where v again being velocity due to constant acceleration, okay. Um, again, you're going to get the change in position over here, um, and then basically v dt one half acceleration t squared, which is the, um, you know, the integral uh, of the right side of the equation. And you can get this equation as a, f to find position as a function of time. Again, this is only good for constant acceleration conditions, which is not usually the case, but there are um, definite cases where acceleration is constant. Uh, the last combination is velocity uh, as well as position, so we use our ADS VDV equation shown here. Um, integrate both sides, okay? Uh, again, the acceleration is constant, so it's going to come outside uh, the integral. Um, and uh, again, the integral of v dv is going to be v squared over 2. So you've got your final minus your initial. Okay, And then here you've got uh, basically the change in position times the constant acceleration. Rearranging that a little bit, you can get uh, velocity as a function of uh, the position for acceleration. Uh, constant acceleration, that is. Again, these equations are only good when it's constant acceleration, which is a special case. So these are not the equations that go to uh, initially. These only work uh, in the case of constant acceleration. Okay. Next thing we need to talk about is what I'm calling graphical kinematics. And, and what happens is a lot of times we actually don't have an equation. We just have a graph of, say, our um, velocity as a function of time. And how can I move back and forth from velocity to position, position to acceleration, what have you. Okay. And we, use, we can use what we know about derivatives and uh, integrals to do that. So, for example, if I have position as a function of time and I want to go to velocity, right? Velocity is just the time derivative of position, okay? Uh, which, if you all remember from calculus, is the slope of the position graph. So again, if I want to find, if I'm given position as a function of time, I can just take derivatives. Um, so, which is the slopes to figure out what the velocity is. So I've got a slope here, Okay, and then I've got another slope here that's a little bit smaller. It's definitely positive, but smaller, so it comes down. Uh, smaller yet, um, and then once I get over to point 0.3 here, my slope is actually going downward. Okay, so you can go, you know, from position to velocity just by using the slope. Same thing goes for velocity to acceleration. Again, if I take another derivative, I can go from velocity to acceleration. So again, uh, you know, right here, uh, it's basically flat, so slope is zero, acceleration is zero, okay? Then I have a pretty sharp slope here, so acceleration jumps up, and then it starts flattening off again. It's still a positive slope, but less and less than it was before, okay? So again, going from position to velocity or velocity to acceleration, just take the slope of the graph to figure that out, if you do not have an equation, okay? Going backwards, so if I have acceleration, I go to velocity, okay? Again, it's the same equation, it's just an integral rather than differentiation. So again, the integral is the area under the curve, okay? So if I look at, say, a d v d t, 
A equals dV dt. If I bring dt over here, okay, if I have A dt, that equals dV. So the area under the curve, which is the integral A dt, equals the velocity change, which is the integral dV, right, or delta V. Okay, so I can take a finite, you know, delta t here, find the area of it, and that gives me the change in velocity. The area under here is equivalent to the change in velocity. So I have a positive area, so I have a positive change in velocity down here. Now, in a situation like this, I need to know my initial condition. I need to know what velocity I'm starting at. Whereas going the opposite direction that we did first, we don't necessarily need to know where we started. Okay. So uh, again, uh, knowing my initial velocity, I can find the change in velocity, get to the next step by just taking the area under the acceleration curve. Same thing goes going from velocity to position. Knowing my initial position, I can find the area under the curve because I'm going to basically take an integral of the velocity equation. Take the area under the velocity curve, and that will give me the displacement or the change in position going from my known initial position to a final position. So again, you use this approach if you have a graph without a nice equation. Okay, you can just take the slopes, take the areas uh, in order to build the graphs, depending on, you know, which way you're going, whether you're differentiating or integrating.